Hi, my name is Paul Leeming. I'm from Visceral Psyche Films and I'm here today on behalf of Video Devices to give you a quick lesson on LUTs. Uh, how to create a LUT first of all and then how to use it in the Pixie series devices and also in post-production. Okay, so our first step is to open our editing software. I'm using Premiere Pro here, 2015. Um, but you could use uh, Final Cut, you could use Resolve, whatever you prefer. I've imported a clip here. Um, it's in log format. So I wanted to demonstrate today how to take a log format image, create a LUT for it, such that we can input it into the Pixie and also use it on the timeline here in the same way. Okay, our first step is to have a picture that you can um, look at and also to have your scopes. I'm using the RGB waveform, which shows each of the three colors and the luminosity values. I'm using the hue saturation luma scope here and the YUV scope here. These basically show you the color points and this shows you the saturation. Uh, at the moment we're in log format, so they will look very small, but as we progress, you'll see these uh, spread out. Okay, so the first thing we want to do with any image is to white balance it. We've already white balanced in camera, but you'll notice here I'm holding a gray card in the picture, so I can easily white balance in post-production. So I'm gonna come over to my presets uh, my video effects folder here. Come down to color correction and fast color corrector. And I'm going to drag it up onto the clip. This gives me a color picker, which I'm going to click here and I'm going to take it over to the gray card here. And I'm going to click on it. And we'll come back here and we can see that the camera was very well white balanced already, so there's only a very slight change compared to what we had in camera, which is a good starting point. So we'll keep that there. Our next step is to start our LUT creation. So for the purposes of this, I'm using Magic Bullet Software's LUT Buddy, which I believe is free. Uh, I'm using it as part of the Magic Bullet uh, color suit. So I'm gonna come back down to my effects panel down here to Red Giant LUT Buddy. I'm gonna drag two instances of this up to my effects controls. So first instance, and second instance. So now we come up here to the effects panel and where it says apply LUT on the first instance, we're going to click on draw pattern. And on the second instance, we're going to choose read pattern. You'll note that both are 3D 32 value LUTs. So this is a fairly standard industry format. Uh, it creates a cube format at the end, which is compatible with Pixie and most uh, editing software that uses LUTs. The reason for this is that in between here is where we create all our effects to bring our original image into the post LUT image. And so if you notice up here, this is the draw pattern, creates a color matrix before LUT application. And the read pattern creates another instance of this behind the image and reads the change between the unaltered version and the edited version that we're gonna create in between the two of them. So think of this as a sandwich and in between is the filling, which is our change of values, which creates the LUT. Okay, so I'm using a log based image from the Panasonic's V-Log. So in this case, I want to, as a first step, bring my log to linear because I want to see it in the color space that we're going to output the final image in. I'm gonna come back to my effects panel here and I've created a quick log to lin preset from the curve function in Premiere. And in this case, I'm using magic bullet looks, but you can use this with any of the curve functions. 
and I'm going to apply it in between the two instances of LUT Buddy. And as soon as I do that, you can see that the image has now taken on a lot more saturation and dynamic range because we've converted the log space to linear space. Okay, so now we have the image in the linear space. I want to create my LUT. So I want to make it look nice and basically have something that saves me time down the road so I don't have to do this every time. I'm using Premiere Pro, so I'm using the Metri Color, which is the main color processing software in Premiere. And I'm going to start adjusting things here. So might bring up some contrast to begin with. I uh, might bring the highlights down a little bit in the sky and I'm going to bring the blacks down to give us our nice shadow definition. And I might bring down a little bit more. And as I do these things, I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm looking both at the picture, but more importantly, I'm looking over here at the scopes, especially the RGB scopes at the beginning, because your monitor may or may not be calibrated, but when it comes to shadows and highlights, uh, our eyes are good, but the scopes will tell you exactly whether you're clipping or not. And it's really important not to clip values at the high or low end, because you want to retain all the dynamic range of your image and have it be very filmic. You'll notice here at the scopes that it appears that there's some uh, close to clipping values on the RGB channels. What that is, is the color matrix from the LUT buddy here. So I'm going to come over to the effect controls and if I turn off the draw pattern and come back over to the Lumetri scopes, you'll see that now that I've just disconnected that effect that all our images within the 0 to 100 lines, there's nothing clipped at either end, which is how you want your image. Uh, you can use curves later on to create shadow depth and things like that. When you come back over to the effects panel, you'll notice something. Lumetri color has applied automatically, but you'll notice it's not sandwiched in between the two LUT buddy instances. So what I want to do is I want to drag the Lumetri color box up to here so that it is now sandwiched in between the draw and the read instances of LUT buddy so that anything that you would do with the Lumetri color wheels, etc., is able to be read by the second instance of LUT buddy. You'll also notice that I've kept the log to lin profile at the end of the chain. This is because there is more control over the log values in the color area, the color correction area here. And you can do it all in log space. And then the last application is log to lin. This will give you slightly better image quality. In the Okay, so you'll notice now that uh, Lumetri Color is sitting above the log to lin and it's sandwiched between the two LUT Buddy instances. And don't forget that because I was showing you to check the scopes, I deselected the draw instance of LUT Buddy. So don't forget to reselect it so that both instances are selected as effects. Otherwise, it won't work. Okay, you can come into creative curves, you can adjust all sorts of values here. I give it a, a nice tone curve like this. Uh, we can come and adjust individual colors, for example, on the color wheel. If I want to saturate it more, I can adjust various colors independently of each other. And basically, this part is entirely up to you how you want to create your LUT. Um, you can adjust highlights. You can see here we've brought the highlights right up to 100%, so I might pull the highlights down a little bit and give ourselves a, a nicer sky roll off here. Bring the mids up a little bit. And basically adjust the image to the point where I'm satisfied that it looks nice. And then comes the LUT creation portion. 
Okay, so we're happy with our image and now we want to say this is nice. I want to make a LUT for this image for the pixie. So I'm going to first of all make sure that the draw box, draw pattern is activated, which it is. I want to make sure that all the effects are between the two instances, which they are. And now I'm going to come to the second instance of LUT Buddy. And I'm going to click on this little box here that says Setup. Clicking here. And you can see that we're going to create a 3D 8-bit 32 sample LUT, which is basically your standard 3D LUT for most color software and also the Pixie. Um, don't worry if your footage is in 10-bit, etc. But the LUT itself is interpolating, so it won't be a problem. Come down here to Export LUT. I'm going to save to my desktop. And I'm going to call it Pix E Log LUT. And we're going to save it in the cube format, which is a very standard format for LUTs, which works in most software as well as the Pixie series. And I'm going to click Save. And then done. And we are done.